This episode is proudly supported by Pepe Sayer Australian Cultured Butter, batch churned from single origin cream. Like any good product, you have to start off with, with an amazing cream. Like for us, it's the, the, the raw material that matters. So where we get our cream from matters a lot. Uh, so we can't just buy your average supermarket grade cream. So you need real cream. You need basically the stuff they skim off the top of milk at a farm. And to get that product, we, we have to go to the farmers direct. So for us, we, we have to source our cream very carefully. We travel a lot to different farms to make sure that the cream we're getting is the real deal from different areas of Australia. For more information, go to pepisayer.com.au. It's a job I've had that every day I, I'm happy to get out of bed and go to work. I don't have a bad day. I learn something new every day from someone. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great job. This is The Producers. I'm Anthony Huckstep. For the last 18 years, the paddock in Leopold has offered people with a disability the chance to learn new skills. And thanks to the paddock's Kim Turner, the fruits of their labour are now appearing on restaurant menus across the region. Well, we're on a seven acre farm in Leopold, which is southeast east of Geelong, going towards the Ballerine, down towards Queenscliff. Leopold is the local region. Um, there's lots of farming already in the area, um, lots of wineries, uh, potato growers, it's urban, um, but it's also a very small suburban area as well. There's a little shopping centre and things like that. You're only 15 minutes into the Geelong city. Um, but, yeah, there's lots and lots of farms that are doing um, great things out that area. And we're just – we're five minutes from the shopping centre, but you'd think we were in the middle of nowhere where our farm is. It's great. Through food, the paddock has become an inclusive environment for individuals to grow and thrive. Well, what we do is, um, originally we were a disability service um, and we farmed and then the farm closed down um, and we thought we'd lost the farm and with a, an amazing company called Give Where You Live have bought the farm and asked a small group of us to come back and caretake the farm but continue doing what we were doing. So we grow lots of fresh produce. We've got a mixed fruit orchard, um, an apple orchard where we're affiliated with Flying Brick and they're a cidery down the road um, and they we look after their apples, take them there and they make cider. Um, we have a, a little nursery and play where we sell potted colour and seedlings we have an amazing woodwork group and we make really quirky uh, bird boxes and the guys build the fences and all the structures around the farm. Um, we have a commercial kitchen. Um, so we get in and um, preserve a lot of our produce. Um, we have little cooking classes in there because we are still supporting. Um, we had to go out on our own um, and get our own ABNs. So there's seven of us that stuck together as in staff and we've got about 20-odd participants that have come back on board with us. So the odd day they might come in and, and go around and pick some veggies out of the garden and make lunch. At the moment, we've still got lots of chilies, um, bullhorn um, capsicums. Uh, the eggplants are finished. Uh, the Jerusalem artichokes are ready to harvest. We've still got lots of basil. Um, and we've just put in all our brassicas and um, kales and, and things like that as well. So, yeah, and we do, and we're prepping to do our garlic patch. We grow pretty good garlic. So, um, yeah, we do a huge patch of garlic. It all started two decades ago as a disability service, but it's become so much more now. It began all about 18 years ago um, when um, the paddock first opened um, and it was predominantly a disability service where participants would come and um, learn skills, I suppose, um, to get themselves work ready. Sometimes it's just a social setting um, and being at the farm is very calming and very safe for them. 
um, but they learn all aspects of, of farming from seeding to propagation. There's lawn mark groundskeeping skills. Um, yeah, there's a lot of skills um, learnt. We've got um, one gentleman who loves lawn mowing and loves tractors and now he is actually, every Monday, he goes out with a staff member and he's got his own trailer, now his own lawn mower and he goes out into the community and gets paid to mow people's lawns. Um, yeah, it's it's some, some of the guys, as I said, um, don't have any social life other than coming to the farm. Um, we've got um, guys that have gone through and they learn cooking skills in the kitchen. So I've got one gentleman now, his dad sends me photos of when he goes around to his house every Wednesday and um, he's made sausage rolls or um, spaghetti or something like that that he's learnt from out at the farm, which is exciting. Kim grew up on a farm and has always had a wonderful connection to the land. Um, for me, um, I grew up with my grandparents mainly on a farm. Um, I never remembered going to the supermarket. My grandmother made absolutely everything, butter, you name it. And she had a big old wooden um, wood stove that ran for 24 hours. Um, and the table was always set, breakfast, uh, morning tea, lunch, afternoon tea, dinner, supper. Um, and I think the, the funniest memory would be my grandfather came home one day with a brand new electric stove thinking it would make her life easier and she said a few choice words and it sat there till um, wrapped in plastic till the day she died. I got to experience all foods. I, there's not a food I don't think I don't like. As soon as Kim left school, she started a career in hospitality. Just working in kitchens um, and being a waitress because um, I could travel with that as well. So I had a passion for travelling, so they worked both well together. I've worked at some nice places, so, you know, um, enjoying you know, showing people their, their creations coming out of the kitchen. Um, and then towards the end of, uh, I think I turned 40 and I thought, oh, well, I don't want to do this anymore. It's too hard. <laughs> so that's when I went into uh, disability. Um, it was about 11 years ago. Um, the group that I work with, we've all one man's been there 18 years. He was there when it started. Um, so we're all long-term um, employees out at the paddock, but yeah, I've been there 11 years. At the paddock, food plays the incredible role of connecting, inspiring and educating everyone. Oh, food plays a huge part. Um, there's so many different things like um, we could go out and pick a cauliflower out of the garden and half of them will say, I don't like cauliflower or half of them won't know that they like cauliflower. But because they're taken part in grow, putting the seed in the in the cell tray or they've watered it and looked after it and then picked it, they'll have a go at it and they end up liking it, um, which is really important because a lot of the guys have very um, not so good diets. Um, their diets could also be colour-based, so they could be very mono, um, very yellow. Um, so it's exciting to see the guys... Um, experience that um, and also with the restaurants um, the guys help pick and wash and deliver and it's great because all the chefs have been amazing they'll um, explain to the guys what they're going to do with our produce um, they get spoken to by their first name um, so it's quite exciting sometimes I have the guys fighting to come in the car to <laughs> to drop things off because they want to see Chef Michael or Chef Ben or you know, whoever, um, and they talk footy and whatever. For Kim, the uniqueness of the paddock means that every day offers something new on the farm. Oh, a typical day for us. Um, it could be weather dependent, but um, we get out to the farm about nine. Um, we all gather and wait for everyone to turn up. Um, and then we will sort of split up into little groups 
um, and one group might want to go and do woodwork in the shed. Um, another group might go out and um, work in the field. Um, we might go into the hothouse and do some seeding um, or might go into the kitchen and do some cooking. Um, yeah, or if the weather's nasty, um, we just might go inside and watch a movie and cook some, you know, cook some muffins and, um, yeah, have a feed. <laughs> the produce grown at the paddock now features in some of the region's hatted restaurants. I was very fortunate. My nephew did his apprenticeship at Tulip and um, he just was talking about me one day and I ended up taking a box in um, and it started from there at Tulip and then it was just um, word of mouth. Like then I had another chef ring me who worked um, at Igni um, and then we started delivering to Igni and then that um, another chef was moonlighting somewhere else and asked me, oh, are you Kim? And um, then we just, it was just a knock on effect. Yeah. Um, very proud. Yeah. Um, it's amazing. Um, it's, yeah, it's sort of put us out into the community a little bit more, um, I feel. Um, it's, you know, a lot of the chefs have actually bought the, their whole team out and had a tour of the farm to see where the produce is coming. So they've actually come out and met the guys as well, which was really amazing. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's a huge impact, yeah. The paddock is not only enriching the lives of those with a disability, but those that are working there are finding their lives dramatically enriched too. It's had a great impact. Like, I've never worked with a group of staff and had such an amazing team. Um, it's a job I've had that every day I, I'm happy to get out of bed and go to work. I don't have a bad day. I learn something new every day from someone. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great job. I'm somebody who can't st sit still. Um, and sort of move around a fair bit. And this is the longest I've been grounded in my life. So, um, yeah, as I said, I get out of bed every day, excited to go to work. So um, it's had a huge impact. Um, I've made a lot of good friends um, and my work colleagues, as I said, I've never worked with a bunch of like-minded people who have different skill sets um, and we all work in together, um, which is great. The chance to enjoy their produce in a restaurant had quite a profound impact on Kim and the participants too. One of the best, well, we make a pretty mean pizza in our pizza oven, so we're always looking for excuses to fire that up. But I think the most um, for us was when Tulip uh, set up a dinner. Um, and we took in a few boxes of produce um, and they designed the menu around our produce um, and we all got dressed up and went to dinner and had the opportunity to talk in front of all the customers about us and what we do. Um, so that was, yeah, that was pretty special. It was just mind-blowing, you know, because uh, some of the participants were, um, came along as well um, and they'd never been to a restaurant like that before in their lives. So um, it was it was great to see them trying new things. And, um, yeah, it was really, really special. Now that things with the paddock are back on track, Kim wants to immerse the paddock into the community more as a genuine hub for everyone to celebrate. Now that we're back at the farm, um, we'd like to um, get the community back in. Um, we do have, we did have um, groups coming through when we do lunch for them, make a pizza, have a coffee, um, and then they have a tour um, and they pay, you know, a few dollars for that. Um, so getting the community back in is really important for us. Um, and um, getting the restaurants back on board, I'm slowly chipping away at getting in contact with them again and getting them all back on board. Um, and um, yeah, just doing what we do best and that's gardening, woodwork, the farm. Yeah, because every day is different. 
you know, you get a surprise every day. Um, and I suppose that's what makes it special. I think that's it. You know, every day is different and you don't know um, what's going to happen next or what's coming around the corner. The Paddock is an extraordinary initiative, one that creates opportunity to grow and thrive and a genuine connection through food that delivers a real story on the plate. This is The Producers, a Deep in the Weeds production. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Stay tuned as we share the stories of producers, farmers, makers and growers, the true lifeblood of the food industry. Follow us on Instagram at Producers Podcast or email us at producerspodcast at deepintheweeds.com.au.